guys, Mike and the Great Outdoors. Decided I'm going to do an update on my Sprinter van build. Uh, it's been a little while. I haven't gotten a lot done with it because there's a lot of things going on. I don't document everything that I do on it as I do it, but as it's completed, uh, I'll, uh, I'll show that and then answer any questions. If you've got any, uh, put them down in the comments. So here we go. All right, this is the van. It is a 2004 Sprinter 3500 with the turbo diesel motor in it. Now on the sides of this it used to have a bunch of lettering and stuff. If you look at one of my other videos, you can see what it used to look like. And it took me forever to get all those letterings off. It was all around the sides of this and everything. And I used all kinds of things. The, the letters were uh, vinyl, but then it had a couple pictures of painted dogs on both sides that were painted in some kind of acrylic. And that stuff was hard to get off. Uh, I found a solution for that, not that everyone's going to have this problem like I did, but uh, this is what I used. This. It is a rubber wheel that you put in your drill, and you just uh, go on the paint, and you, you run it on the paint. It did not damage the paint at all, did not burn it or anything. And this is the wheel. This is the packaging of it. Three and a half eraser wheel with arbor. The arbor on this one is attached. Now, um, I got that at like AutoZone or one of those places and it was really expensive. I found them on um, Amazon and they were a lot cheaper. And it took me a few hours to really get all those letters off and then polish and stuff like that. So that's the first thing I did to the van. All right, most of the interior was stock on here. I went ahead and removed the panels and I'm starting to put new panels up. Now these are almost exactly like the panels that were in here. And I just liked them uh, because they were simple and you didn't have to, you know, put up a lot of wood paneling and the weight and everything else. So I was trying to keep it simple. And I did put insulation up here behind this. Um, the roof, I'm still trying to figure out what, what I'm gonna do. I'm thinking about using some of these which are cedar planks and I did a, an Econoline uh, build and I used these on that and I really liked it and uh, these would be pretty easy to mount uh, of course I have to put more insulation in up here but I would run these all the way across the top that's what I'm thinking um, I haven't finished the paneling on the side yet because I'm still still working out uh, some of the things that I got going on in here uh, of course this is the bed now this bed is an Ikea bed. I did the same bed design in my Econoline. And these are bed rails. These are the center bed rails that you would get for an Ikea bed at Ikea. And uh, I've got them mounted with the Ikea brackets. And then I use a small screw, which you can see down in there. Uh, let's see this one here. That screw is to stop it from rattling and vibrating and come out, coming out. And I did actually screw the very end planks down to the rail. And this is just a cheap mattress that's on top. And the, the placement of it, that's our cricket now, the placement of it is um, in the window area where a window would be in this van. Just to give you a couple more inches on each end. Now this van is actually a couple inches narrower than my Econoline was. So, but uh, this works out. Unfortunately, I won't be able to put insulation in on those ends because uh, there just won't be enough room. So I'm thinking about doing some kind of picture or doing something in there. Uh, this is the inverter. Now, this inverter was in here when I got the van. It's a, I believe it's a 5,000 watt inverter, and it's, it's pretty neat. The uh, way it works is that when the van is plugged in, it's plugged into power, uh, it acts as a battery charger for the house battery when it's just kind of like a, a regular RV. And I can switch through a couple different modes with the switch up here. Uh, when I'm using power, you can have the inverter turned on, but it will not uh, actually be on until it senses a draw. It sends a pulse out to the uh, electrical system in the van, and if it detects something that is requiring voltage, it will... Uh, automatically turn on and as soon as that device is turned off the inverter turns off so what that means is um, 
I can have like a refrigerator in here that is only it doesn't run all the time, so the inverter's not on all the time. And the refrigerator uh, is warmed up enough to where it needs to kick on the compressor, the inverter turns on. And I'm actually have the refrigerator, it's gonna go right down here, and I've tested it. I've run a refrigerator in here for a week uh, without any uh, external power, and the refrigerator works perfectly. I've got two plugs here. One is uh, from the inverter, and one's from a shore connection that I've con uh, put on. Working on the wiring on the lights, and they do. This one does work. I have uh, uh, two switches here. I've got lights that are going to go underneath uh, some cabinets right here, and I have lights going down the center of the roof. I'm going to have three lights. This fan was already in here. This fan was not. It had an AC unit that was completely destroyed on the top. I sit there and try to get it to work and everything, but had a bunch of loose solders and stuff like that. So I took the, the AC off and I just replaced it with a 12 volt fan. I think that's more efficient. So really, that's about it. Uh, other than this uh, bench I should talk about. Um, this is a bench I got out of yard sale. I was thinking about using it. I kind of like trying to repurpose stuff. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to use this or not. It does have storage up underneath of it. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but when it's done, there's going to be a sink, which I have, and a cabinet that I'm working on over here on this side. It's going to have the refrigerator mounted underneath the center of the, the bed. And there's actually a plug in the back where I can switch it from 12 volt to shore power if I want to. Um, over here is going to be benching, uh, seating. I don't know if I'm going to keep this or not. I might just build my own. Uh, and then we're going to do the roof and or the ceiling i should say and get that all completed it had these these panels here like this they were really nice it had one here one here it was missing one in the middle uh, i had a leak and i'm thinking that's what the previous owner removed, removed it for there was a leak over here somewhere in the middle and it was from one of the seams uh in the sprinter van but it was pretty easy to fix i just used rv uh i forget what the tape is called it used uh to, to fix leaks on the roofs of regular RVs and it worked great I did all the seals on the roof just in case only one was leaking though but got the bed done oh let me go show you my plumbing so we're in the back here up underneath the bed I've got a five gallon tank mounted above a five gallon um, black water that's fresh water black water and I made it so I could just remove this this panel and slide it out uh, it's on wheels. That was the easiest way I figured I could uh, get this uh, in and out. Uh, this is going to be the feed tube for the sink, and this is going to be the fill for the water tank, which is going to extend out a little bit further, and you just put a water hose in here and you just fill it up. So it's going to be pretty easy. Um, and inside here, I know it's kind of a weird place to have it. Let me see if I can get to it. Okay, I came in from the other side here. Inside here is my solar controller. It's not something you need to get to a lot, but I wanted to make sure I could still see it and it was out of the way. I didn't want to have a lot of obst uh, obstacles in my way when I was doing things, but that's my solar controller right there. And this is under the bed. This is all going to be a garage area, which is going to be quite, quite large for what I need. I'm running a 200 watt solar panel on the roof. A little bit hard to get to, but it's up on the roof. Yeah, it's a pretty good size and the house battery is actually located up underneath the body of the, the van so the house battery is actually located up underneath here that's the base of it right there that's the the battery box and i did put this switch in right there so if i wanted to i can, can disconnect all the power going to the battery so it's a large truck battery I had to replace that. And also has an isolator for the for the charging system. It'll charge the the house battery when the van's running. So works pretty good. The inverter that's in here actually could run the AC, but I just elected not to do that because you, pretty much you had to have the van running. Just the battery would only last about 15 minutes while it wasn't uh, running. But if the van was running, you could run the the rooftop AC, which was pretty cool. Do another quick walk around. 
anyone wants to compare this with the other videos of how the lettering came out, I did do the front hood in a uh, bed liner black. And the reason why I did that was because it was pretty scratched up. It used to have a bug shield on here too, and I took that off. It had a lot of rusted pity spots in it, so instead of trying to match the paint, I just uh, decided to go with black. I may go with white here at some point. Um, great running van, a lot of power. It's the turbo diesel, uh, five cylinder. Awning comes out great, looks great. That window was already in there. And the only other windows are the two in the back doors and of course the front of the van itself. Oh, here's electrical outlets, I should show these. Um, these are um, just 110. This one was a, was a high amp one. I don't know what they hooked to it, but it, I've got it disconnected now. And then I installed this which is my shore power and that goes to the inverter straight to the inverter and it'll charge the batteries or run everything in there when um, I'm plugged into shore power all right that's it um, just wanted to give you an update on what was going on with the van I don't cover everything as I do it I do it then I want to review it when it's done because I, I have so many mistakes that I just want to get it done and then show up when it's complete so I got it all figured out. Uh, don't want to waste anybody's time. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe if you like the channel. Uh, I've got a lot of other things on here for camping and stuff like that. So check it out. Again, thanks for watching Mike and the Great Outdoors. Be safe.